Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is going to be all about resonance and it's still going to be part of the curved arrow video and problem set. So you guys can find the resonance quiz. I already have it up and running. And I know you guys covered this for your first lecture. And so resonance is an extremely important topic. It's going to be a fundamental part of every single unit you're going to be doing in organic chemistry one and two, all the way until you finish this year. And so I really recommend that you guys can get this topic down and understand it really well because it'll make a lot of future topics much, much easier. All right. And it's going to be a huge part of that, the first test. A lot of the questions in the first test revolve around resonance and stuff like that. So let's just get started. We're, I'm going to show you this quick example here, and it's going to help me lead into what resonance is. So I'm sure you guys have seen this sort of structure that I'm drawing right now, right? That's a carboxylic acid. Uh, you, they introduced it to you guys in Gen Chem, but I'm sure you've seen it in Orgo by now too. So it's a carboxylic acid. It looks very similar to this. The only difference is we remove that hydrogen and we have a minus charge, all right? And so it goes from a carboxylic acid to what's known as a carboxylate. It's just the base version of a carboxylic acid, or in other words, a deprotonated version of a carboxylic acid. And these terms will become more familiar to you as you go through the semester. And so carboxylate is a base, right? It's going to be a base because it has that oxygen with that negative charge. And I have it reacting with a proton, right? So. We've seen this before in the previous videos, and I'm sure by now you've also seen it in the class. And so let's try to predict how this reaction is going to go, all right? Remember our curved arrow rules, we start from area of high, to low de uh, high electron density to low density, right? And so there's a lone pair that's going to come out over here. It's going to attack that proton, all right? And just let me quickly say, I didn't draw the lone pairs in, like this oxygen has two lone pairs and this oxygen has three lone pairs. I didn't draw those lone pairs in because it's explicit based on the formal charge of the atom. All right, that's something you guys are going to have to get used to, that we're not going to always show you the amount of lone pairs, but because of the formal charge given, you should be able to figure it out. And uh, of course, you'll be able to do this much easier as the semester goes on, but it would be a good idea to practice almost on your own. Just a couple of formal charge questions. All right, and so again, it's always easiest to draw. What we know stays the same. So we're going to have that red oxygen wasn't touched. It's good, so we can just put it there. We have that blue oxygen, and now it's going to have a bond with that green hydrogen now, all right? And so that's what we would expect to be our product. So we expect that this would be our product 100% of the time. But in reality, we only get this product actually 50% of the time. So let's just go over why. Why would we only get that 50% of the time, right? We did everything, it looked like we did everything correct. We went from an area of high to low density. The high electron density was on that blue oxygen and it goes to that low electron dense proton, right? It's got no electrons. Everything seems to be working out well, but why did we only get that product 50% of the time? Well, it's gotta do with resonance. I mean, you guessed it, right? Title of the video. So, you redraw our structure here. All right. So, the thing about what resonance is, resonance allows us to essentially show the flow of electrons between structures, okay? So, where we expect this to be our product 100% of the time, we only get it 50% of the time. The other 50% is this. So, 
So we're going to have essentially this molecule. And I know it's drawn a little differently, but it's exactly the same version of this. But now the blue oxygen is double bonded. The red oxygen has the hydrogen and it's single bonded to that carbon. All right. So resonance can explain why we get this product, um, why we get this product also 50% of the time when we expected it to never happen. All right. So resonance allows us to show the flow of electrons within a structure, right? And curved arrows are going to come into play again. So now I'm going to draw the lone pairs just so it's a little clearer. And so we're going to draw a resonance structure. And a resonance structure is essentially just a contributing structure that can show an alternate view almost of how electrons are represented within a molecule. Because electrons, the, um, the way that we show you as molecules like this is not actually how the molecule exists in nature. Okay, so let me just show you and it'll be much clearer. And again, I'm sure you guys saw this in a lecture. So we have, instead now we have this structure, okay? And these double-headed arrows represent resonance arrows. All right, and so let's look at what we did here. The double bonded red oxygen is now a single bonded red oxygen, and it went from two lone pairs to three lone pairs, and now it has a negative charge. The blue oxygen was single bonded with three lone pairs and a negative charge. Now it's got a double bond and two lone pairs, and it's neutral. All right, and so... Pretty similar to what we did in the last video, let's draw the curved arrows of how to go from here to here. And if you want to pause the video, feel free to pause the video right now. So let's see. We see that one of these bonds is going to come up to that oxygen because as it stands, we only have two lone pairs right there, yet in the end, the red oxygen is going to have three lone pairs. And so we can f reason out that one of these double bonds is going to come up and become a lone pair because now we only have a single bond here. So we can go and draw that coming up. And now we see that this oxygen, the blue oxygen, has three lone pairs here in a single bond, yet now it's going to have two lone pairs and a double bond. And so we can assume that one of these lone pairs came down and formed a double bond, which would be right here. All right. So that would be the curved arrows for this. So what exactly does this show? It's showing us that the electrons in, let's say, this structure can actually flow and be represented in this structure. And resonance structures, a key uh, aspect of resonance structures is that they exist in equilibrium. Now, if you guys remember gen chem equilibrium, right? So if I have this structure here, oh, let me do the colors, right? We're gonna, these equilibrium arrows and yes, these are different from the resonance arrows, so these do not equal um, these arrows, okay? Not the same thing. And so I also draw this structure. Right? These are going to be in equilibrium. That means that there's going to be constant flow back and forth between these two structures. Now, in this case, the only difference between them is that one is 
oxygen is red, one is blue, okay? In reality, assuming I did not radio label anything, right, just normal drawings, it will look like this. Okay, these are just the same exact structures. If I just flip this one, then it would look exactly the same as that. So in this case, these resonance structures are equivalent, we can say. But the key fact about resonance structures is that we have good resonance structures and we have bad resonance structures. And that's going to be covered in the next video. This is just going to be a quick intro into resonance. And if you guys have any questions, again, if something was unclear here, uh, always feel free to email me. And also the reason I'm cutting off the video now is just because I don't want these to get too long. I know um, it's hard to kind of sit through some long, long videos. So I kind of try to want to break it up into like 10 minute videos. And plus the last one ran for like 17 minutes. So I'm going to try to not do that again. All right. And so I'll see you guys in the next video.